All right, so um, I'm super excited to make this video. I find myself saying that quite often. I am often super excited to make the video I make. But anyway, um, I'm excited about making this video because um, I'm excited about spreading the truth. I'm excited about sharing, and I guess that can sound scary, to, depending on who you are and what that sounds like to you. But I'm excited about spreading the truth. I'm excited about spreading knowledge. I'm excited about sharing the gospel. There you go. Yes, the gospel um, of Jesus Christ. And um, yeah, so this is like my this is my follow up video to my theological thoughts via video that I made because I was watching it. I got some good comments. I got some cool comments from a good friend, um, and I want to. Um, continue on that foot and um, yeah I want to talk about some things so yeah in, my, in that video the spiritual thoughts video or um, theological thoughts um, I was talking about sola scriptura and how sola scriptura is a man-made belief it's a man-made concept it is not it is not true and it is it's basically a it's basically a not it's a it's basically a demonic distortion because what it does is it causes people to rule or it causes people to rule parts of God's word out like the book of mormon like it makes people think that the book of mormon is not true yeah the book of mormon is the word of god yes it is um, it makes people feel like the book of mormon is not true and it makes them not even consider it because it cuts them off at the pass with the belief that says well, the Bible is the only word of God. The Bible is the only thing that can ever be the word of God. There will never be anything more than the Bible. Because Revelation says, do not add to or take away. And first off, it's like misinterpretation of that verse. False demonic distortion of doctrine. Which is that the Bible is the only word of God. That is a demonic distortion of the truth. It is basically, it's a lie. Because that's not true. So yeah. So anyway, um, I'm super glad, um, I'm super thankful for what I know, I'm super thankful for the things I've figured out, uh, yeah, I'm super thankful that I have the comfort and knowledge that, of knowing that the Book of Mormon is true, and I'm, I'm super thankful for the Book of Mormon, I'm super thankful, um, that I have found so much more truth than I ever knew before. I am so thankful for that, and it is so life-changing, and if that is absolutely true, which it absolutely is, just think of those implications. What would you do if you had found the truth out about so much more that changed everything? What if you found out that it's not as simple as you either go to heaven or you go to hell? What if you found out that God actually loves you more? And what if you found out that a lot of people's thoughts about God are actually true? Those thoughts and these thoughts are these thoughts are thoughts that I used to fight. I used to fight these thoughts and and the belief because I used to say, well, you know, you just don't understand God, and you need to, you know, you need to do this, this, and this, and um, you know, because if you don't, you are going to hell. For example. And, but then, like, take, for example, the question, and I had a moment in my life, it's funny, like, I never grew up as a political person until, like, President Bush came out, and my cousins were, like, my my uncle, and my, and I started realizing my grandparents and my dad were mostly, like, leaning, or they were, they were yeah, they were mostly on the conservative side, um, so I was like, you know, that's what I vibe with, so conservatism, that's where I'm at. And then eventually when I started doing my own thing and walking my own path, um, I started believing a little differently. And I started voting for, I voted for Bernie Sanders and I started wanting him to re win and stuff like that. And, uh, but then something else switched. And around that time, that was also the time when I was an atheist or um, um, whatever the other word is, agnostic. And so some time passed before I came back to God basically and the funny part is, is like when I did, I also switched to liking Trump. And uh, I'm not trying to make this political or say a bunch of political things. I'm just kind of telling. I'm just kind of telling this, 
my story here a little bit. But, um, yeah, so I made that switch back to Trump. Or, <laughs> and back to God. Uh, you know, of course, not that Trump is God. That's not what I'm saying at all. But um, there's a time when I was a liberal, though, when I was thinking about things and I was questioning God and I was questioning a lot of thoughts. And I feel a lot, I feel the same way now about a lot of those things as I used to, actually. I'm going over the Bay Bridge and the water over there is a certain color. It's pretty, pretty interesting. Everything else is really dark and blue, but right there it's kind of light. Almost like there's a, like it's really low depth and there's sand underneath. I don't know. Of course there is, but, you know, um, sand at the top. Anyway, um, so one of the things that I intended when I was fighting God and fighting Christianity, basically, fighting the right-wing uh, theology, if you will, uh, back then when I was, like, a liberal, was I would say basically, like, well, how the heck is it fair that God would just send you to hell, you know, like, if you were, um, whatever, like, Okay, so the only way you're going to go to heaven is if you know Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, and He's your Lord and personal Savior. That's the only way you're going to go to heaven. It's like, well, what about everyone else who doesn't know Him? That was my question then. And that's a good question. It's a big question. And a lot of people on the other side of the fence are like, but no, don't, don't, don't ask that question. Don't think about that. No, no, no. Or they say, God's Word says right here. And, uh, you know, so it's not something that I think a lot of people like to deal with. And definitely if you're in a big, glamorous church with a big theatrical um, Oscar-winning pastor in his rock, rock show breaking out all the stops and the emotionalism at every turn, and he's a huffing, and he's a puffing, and he's getting this out, and he's talking about personal details about himself that no one needs to know. That's not normal. That's not, that's like, come on, that's not church. That shouldn't be church. Why is that church? You know, why is that church, right? That's my point. Why is that church? That shouldn't be church. Um, they don't like talking about those kinds of things. Like, well, wait a minute. Are you telling me that because, no, and like if you ask Joel Osteen, for example, he'll, he'll kind of, he'll kind of like, he'll kind of change the subject. He'll kind of, well, you know, I believe or we believe this and oh, I'm I don't really want to answer that question right now. I think I want to answer something else. Uh, <laughs> you know? So, I mean, people don't like... It. It, it, that's the thing. It's like, this is the fact that people believe that it's as simple as, like, well, you either know Jesus and go to heaven, or you don't, and you go straight to hell. And you know what? You don't get any second chances, because you're a sinner. You're a foul, evil beast sinner from the depths of hell. You be cast back to hell now, you demon, where you belong you don't know Jesus, you're from hell. It's like, what? What? Why? 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 You know? And so, it's it's frustrating because people believe, I hope you guys are still with me on this, I, people believe that just because you don't know Jesus, you're going to hell. It's like, okay, this is, this is why, this is why the atheists run away with arguments left and right. This is why the atheists clown on Christians from time to time, because they use these arguments and they say these things, and unfortunately the Christians don't have good responses to them most of the time. They really don't. Even the street preacher videos you see viral on YouTube or TikTok or whatever. Um, and it's like, well, not be, well the, the whole reason this problem exists is because that's not true. Just because you don't know Jesus doesn't mean you're going to hell. Like, that's not the way it works. Uh, <laughs> and and the, other question, the other question that the atheists use all the time, and it's a very valid question. And you know what? Kudos, atheists, for asking this question. Because this is a tough question, and it should be asked, and people should face it, and they should, they should deal with it, and they should answer it. And that is, how can a loving God send you to hell? Right? Right? Okay. So... You're telling me that God loves you, but he's sending you to hell forever with no chance of return, no chance of escape ever. You are eternally, eternal, a.k.a. forever, without end, 
no change ever coming, no end ever coming, nothing but the same result for an infinite amount of time. Infinite meaning never ending and always continuing. Why would a loving God send his children to heaven to, to hell? Why? And the reason the reason why, there is no reason why. He doesn't. <laughs> that's the whole point. He doesn't. He doesn't do that. And that's that's where that's where there's so many that's why the problem with so much church and um, theology is because there's so much confusion everywhere. There's so much false belief. There's so many false doctrines. There's so many misbeliefs. I mean, if you really, like, you know, talk to a pastor and stuff, like, like I pointed out before, you can talk to these people and they have some, they have, they have degrees in uh, divinity school, you know, theology. They have all these different degrees, right? And they still come to the same false conclusions. Or actually, they don't come to the false conclusions themselves. They actually are told them, taught them, and instructed to accept them. And then they believe them, and they take them with them. And it's like, dude, that you need to really look at things a little bit differently. Because God doesn't send people to hell just because they don't know him. He gives them a chance to know them. And some and you some of you Christians are like, Amen, Amen, I know it, I know it, I know it. And unless he does all your whole life, like my grandma will say, my mama, she'll say, Well, God's giving you chances every day, all the time to know him. And she's right. She's like, But when it comes to your deathbed, that's the last chance. And it's like, well, that's not true. Yes, there's a difference when you die, and what happens in this life does determine where you go when you die. However, um, just because you didn't accept Jesus doesn't mean you're going to hell. I mean, there's a little bit of truth in that, but there's also not. And so that's the important parts to kind of distinguish. Um, you know, there are there are missionaries. Yeah, there's missionaries. There's lots of saints. Yeah, there's saints. There's saints on the other side of the veil um, in the spirit world who are teaching the gospel. Just like in this world, we teach the gospel to everyone here. There's saints in the afterlife in the, on the other side of the veil teaching everyone the gospel there. We do baptisms for the dead to give them a chance to make it to heaven. That we, we, basically, this is, this is how much God loves you, and this is how much the other belief is a lie. The other belief says, well, if you just lived on an island and you never heard of Jesus Christ and you died, you go to hell. Well, where's the fairness in that? Literally, how is that fair? How is that fair? It's not fair. That's the point. It's not fair. And so does God just, and this is another thing, Calvinists believe that if you, well, yeah, Calvinists believe that some people are destined for hell, meaning, and this is what they mean, they literally do mean to say this, they mean that God created some people to go to hell because he decided where they're going before he made them, he decided where they're going before they died, they have no control over it because They were destined, predestined for hell. So let me ask you a question, Calvinists. Why would God why would God do that? And you'll say, Well, God is sovereign and He is He is all knowing and His ways are unknowable and we don't understand His ways. We don't know why He does it, but that's what He does. What do you think is more likely? Do you think it's more likely that that you don't quite understand something? Or do you think it's more likely that God just destines people to hell for some reason that you don't understand? That's a legit question. What kind of sense does it make for a loving God to destine someone for hell? That defies the logic. That means he's not a loving God. Because that means that he doesn't love you. If he destines you for hell, that's like, that's like, that's like having a bait. That's like saying, that's like saying this. It's like saying, I'm going to kill my son. And then, before you have a son, before you have kids at all, and then you have kids, you have a son, and you you raise him, you don't even, I mean, you know, you, the, the kid gets older, he becomes, say, 13, and you think that, and he thinks he's going to have a bright future, he thinks he's going to go to school, he thinks he's going to, you know, he's going to become a lawyer, he's going to become so smart, but you have already decided none of those things are going to happen because you're going to kill him, and because you're, you're going you're gonna to take all those chances away from him. You're going to eliminate his future. You're going to delete every option he has because you're going to kill him. What kind of evil, sick, sadistic, evil person would you be if you did that? That's my point. So why would that be different for God? Why would God do that? 
He doesn't do that. That's the point. He doesn't do that. He doesn't destine people for hell. That's another, like when you look at these things on their face, you can see how outrageous and ridiculous they are. Like that doesn't even make any sense. So that's what we need to start doing. We need to start looking at these things and asking ourselves questions. And I, I want to be pretty clear about something here because I'm on the right foot, but you can go too far. And that's what I want to kind of keep in balance. I want to keep balance in balance. Because you can know the truth, just like I said before. You can know the truth about things. You can get answers about things. You can know the truth of things. You can know the truth of all things. Because the Holy Ghost can reveal the truth of all things to you. And He will if you just try, if you follow Him, you listen to Him, and you keep His commandments, God's commandments. Um, so, in the spirit of questioning things, I'm not trying to. I'm not trying to get people to question the church. I'm not trying to get people to question the Book of Mormon or question God. I am trying to get people to question false beliefs. And um, anyway, I just want to share a little bit of that kind of stuff with you. And um, like I was saying before, I'm very, very thankful that I kind of have merged and bridged the two, like the left and the right, so to speak. Um, and my girlfriend is helping me do that because she helps me incorporate more of the left, whereas I have been more of the right side you know, politically, but also I think like hemispheres of the brain, the way we think, the way we understand things, you know, I don't want to be too far to one side. I want to be balanced. That's what I want to be. Even though part of me doesn't want to agree with that. Part of me doesn't want to believe that. I actually do want to be balanced. Um... So yeah, I'm really thankful that I know that Sola Scriptura is a lie. I'm really thankful that I know there are so many misbeliefs and common misconceptions. I was right back then, and I'm right now. Um, and you do kind of have to figure things out. And I did have to believe certain things in order to find the truth. Because if I didn't believe them, if I hadn't believed certain things, then I would not have encountered the dilemma and the spirit wouldn't have convinced me otherwise had I not believed these things. It's like the concept of how can you learn if you don't try? How can you learn if you don't make mistakes? Why do we have to make mistakes? Why can't the goal is to never make a mistake? Don't ever make a mistake. It's like that's a really vice grip kind of life to live. Why would you want to live that way? Wouldn't you rather live in a way that says, I'm gonna do my best and you know what? I'm gonna make mistakes. I'm not going to make those mistakes on purpose, but I'm going to try my best. I'm going to put myself out there. I'm going to put one foot forward, and I'm going to do the best that I can. And if I make a mistake, so what? You know, I am thankful for that mistake. I'm going to learn from that mistake, and I'm going to move on. I'm not going to repeat this mistake and continue on making the same mistake again and again, but I'm not going to just not try because I'm afraid to make mistakes, you know? So, like... I guess what I'm ultimately saying is is pursue God and try to find out the truth. And I mean, I'll tell you the truth. I can tell you the truth until I'm blue in the face. And the Spirit will accord. And what the Spirit will do is, and this is what happens a lot of times. I know this from experience. You may have, whoever you are, you may have false conceptions. Um, you may have beliefs that are wrong. Yes, you can have beliefs that are wrong. And that's contrary to what we're taught today. What we're taught today is you can't ever be wrong about anything because if you believe it, it's true. And if you believe it, that's your truth. And you deserve to have your truth. But you know what? You deserve to have your truth, but just because you believe it doesn't mean it's true. It might be true for you, sunshine. It's not true for everybody, which is a given. And it does also doesn't mean that it's actually true. So, believe something all you want. It doesn't change whether or not it's true or not, you know? So, anyway, um, I encourage you to find out the truth. I encourage you to pursue God. Um, you can keep on doing the things you're doing, but I want to say be careful because there are so many lies out there. And you guys from the same, from my side but from a different angle, will be saying, that's right, the Book of Mormon is a lie. It's a false doctrine. It's a false Jesus you know, all these things, and it's like, no, it's not, <laughs> no, it's not, I want to be productive with what I'm saying here, um, so I don't want to lose 
I don't want to lose productivity in what I'm saying. But like I said, I'm super excited and thankful that I know what I know. Um, I, I'm, I'm glad that I know enough to be able to discern that Sola Scriptura is not true and that there are so many Protestant beliefs. And I don't hate Protestants. I just refuse to become one. <laughs> no offense. No offense, Protestants. No offense. Seriously, I'm not trying to condescend to you at all. So if it comes across that way, I'm sorry. I don't mean to condescend to you. It's just that I know the difference in what's true and what's not now as far as Protestantism and Mormonism is concerned. And Mormonism is true and Protestantism is not true. And um, I'm just not going to go back down that road again. I'm not going to get sucked back in to false beliefs and continue. So to each their own. You can do whatever you want. There's consequences. But, um, yeah, so theological thoughts. Last theological thoughts before I end this video. Um, if you suspect something's true, you think it's true, and you're trying to... Like, you believe it's true, and the Spirit's witness to you that it's true. But you're kind of not sure... And some other things in your life are kind of butting up against it. They're saying, oh, no, no, no. We're just doing this. Blah, 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 blah. They're trying to tell you all that kind of stuff. Um, it can be a really hard road to walk when you know the truth. And you face nothing but that. With like, no, no, no. I know the truth. Oh, no, no. They keep going at you at, like that. It's like, first of all, you should be respected. Right? And I need to respect other people. So I'm sorry if I have disrespected you guys in any way. I've not met that at all. But it is hard to walk the road when you know something is true and you're facing opposition all around you. Um, yeah, and what I want to say about that is it's still possible to know that it's true. And I want to inspire you to keep going because you're going to find people who help you know that is true if it's true you know what I mean you're going to find the support so I I have had it it's I've I walk a lonely road like that Green Day song and sometimes it's just like that but you will find support you will find strength you will be you will be um, lifted up doesn't the Book of Mormon say that somewhere you'll be lifted up at the last day right um so I just want to inspire you. I am very, very thankful, like I've said, about knowing what I know. And uh, Robert Boylan is real. Listen to Robert Boylan. The guy is so smart. And he helped sustain me in my testimony. And I am so certain about what I know. Anyway, I'll talk to you guys later. I got to go.